shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Man. For those of you that don't know, I, I used to do big black uh, presentations. So anytime Black History Month come around, I am always a little giddy when it comes to the arts. Uh, I, 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 and I hope the people that are listening don't take what I'm about to say wrong, but I feel as though we as black people are some of the most gifted people on the planet especially when expressing ourselves in the arts. We are some of the most creative people that have ever come to the planet. So I, I love sitting back watching us put on public display how awesome we are. I, I love seeing us dance because there's a rhythm that we flow in that is just absolutely amazing. I, I, I love to hear us put words together for, for some reason when one person is reading a sentence, we have melodies going on in our minds. I, I am just always in awe of, of what we do and, and, and I love when we come out, we are so colorful. We, we, can, we, 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 we take things and we put it together. It may not make sense in the minds of others, but for some reason, when you take it, you, you, you lay it out, you say, you, 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 you do like Father God, you stand back and say, oh, it is good. So I'm, I'm just, <clears throat> and then when I listen to us express ourselves in song, there, there, there is a, a, a soulfulness that always show up no matter what we sing. I believe some of you could just sing about alphabet soup and it'll sound good. Uh, but that's just who we are. I, I love the resilience that we have as a people. I love how you can knock us down in some kind of way. We find our rhythm. We get back in the fight. I love how we can lose everything and then we'll take nothing and we'll create a masterpiece. I, I, I love your, I love the different textures of your hair. I love the different complexions that you show up in. I am, I am just amazed at, at who God created us to be. I, you know, I'm, I, I understand some of us can be quite proper, but then on the other hand, I love your, your Ebonics. I love where we can take just words and we'll create something. We'll tell a story and we'll take you on a journey. We'll let you know that there were times we were down, but we were never out. I, I am just amazed at what God placed on the inside of us. And more than anything, I am totally confident in your ability still to pull it off. There's no other people that have had to overcome what our ancestors overcame. And I know in the minds of some that are listening, they will immediately reflect back to the, to the Jews and all that the Jews went through. But I tell you, the difference between the black plight and the Jews' plight is Black people are the only race of people where their families were totally divided. The fathers were sold off. The mothers were laid, le left to raise children and to fend for themselves. And all of a sudden, you still find the strength in, to still come back together and pull it off. So I tell you, black champions, I tell you that you were cut from a different kind of cloth. I tell you that during your darkest moment, you reach back and get a piece of history, and that will become the wind beneath your wings. You come from a people that knows how to overcome. You come from a people that will fight the odds and overcome the odds, sometimes with tears running down our faces, sometimes with the wind being knocked out of us. But I tell you, you come from a people that refuse to quit. And if you ever embrace who you are, you'll understand that God has something buried on the inside of you, just like he did with your ancestors. There's a creative ability that's in you 
There are things that are lying dormant that you have not given birth to. I'm calling your babies forward because the world needs what God has placed on the inside of you. You must give birth to it because it will change the world. So those of you with your light-skinned self, your pecan tan, your chocolate self, I just want to tell you that you are somebody that is special. You were born to do great things. Be unapologetic because of how God created you. Embrace your thick lips and your wide nose. Celebrate your wide hips and your thin waist. I'm saying just be satisfied with who you are because God did not take a shortcut when he created you. You're still the masterpiece of the Father. So live like it. <laughs> Black history. They show the journey, but a lot of times they don't show the fight. Many of us didn't just hop on a boat and drive, drug us on a boat and we just settled in and came. There was a fight back then. Even, on, even way back then, we were fighting because we knew we had what it take to overcome. Why is that important to you? Don't you dare let the little things that you're facing in today's world stop you. You're supposed to win. Give the Lord a big praise. <laughs> well, that's just one of my contributions to Black History Month. I'm sure there are some more. Yeah, there's still some more. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, I used to be, I still am, uh, what they call real black. I love who God created me to be. Now, it hasn't always been like that. There were times that I did have problems with my darkness. There were times I did have problems with my thick lips and my wide nose. I, there, there, there were times because, see, society was saying that there was something wrong with that. But then I messed around and got a glimpse of the land that I was plucked from. And I saw that there was a whole lot of people over there that looked like me. I saw a lot of people that looked like me. They had swag that would blow your mind. They, they carried themselves with a certain level of dignity that would make others stand out of tension when they walked in the room. And that's when I realized that God knew exactly what he was doing when he created the masterpiece called Leo. <laughs> Why is that important? Sometimes you got this decide that you're going to see you and see your worth. Sometimes you just got to decide, man, you know, uh, out of seven point some billion people on the planet, surely my arrival did not catch the planet off guard. Surely God had a plan for little old me. Well, it's just a matter of you understanding that you are absolutely right. God does have a plan for you. Your arrival did not catch the planet off guard or God off guard. The planet was waiting on you. Your purpose was waiting on you. And it was waiting on you to show up in the original form of who God created you to be. So don't you dare try to change who you are. I'm talking about grab hold of life and say, life, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Leo, celebrating. Celebrating Black History Month. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm Pastor Leo and loving the people that God allowed me to do life with. Yeah, 
never looking at you as though the game is over, never looking at you as though you can't pull it off. When I see you, I see a group of champions. When I look at you, I see potential passing me by, and it's your job to take potential and pull it into your reality and make it do what it do. Because you are special. And just in case you don't know, you are loved. And just like the giants in the Bible are cheering for us, I can tell you that your church family is cheering for you. I want to see you become everything that you have were created to be. I want to see it to the point that sometimes it hurts because I want you to win so bad. Not for me, but I know the planet is much better when you can pull it off. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, dear, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for creating us as originals. Thank you, Lord, for being specific in designing us. Thank you, Lord, for not taking us off the the potter's wheel too soon but you you kept us on there and you formed us and you shaped us and 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 when you knew it was time you took the mold off and said it is good thank you for calling us good jesus so as we move to the further portion of this service father have your way do what only you can do i'm yielding Every part of me, my vocal cords, my body, everything, God, unto you to use as you see fit. Holy Spirit, I thank you in advance for changing lives. I thank you that this, the word of, the seed of the word will land into the hearts of the people. And the seed of the word is powerful. It will land into good ground where it will produce an amazing harvest in the lives of the people. So thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord another shout. <clears throat> ah. Yes. Man. Uh, where's the baby that danced? I, I, need, I, I, I need to take me some dance lessons. Yeah, so uh, just let me know where I signed up at. Uh, Teresa, you were born to tell the Story, girl. Yeah, yeah, I saw the Negro mama. I, I saw her. I saw her. I, I saw her. I see her every day. I've seen her for years. I've seen her with the tenacity to never quit. The black mama. Yes, God. And, and then the, 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 y'all turn it up on me today, singers. Y'all, you know, yeah, y'all turn it up. You know, like y'all tried to flex in the building. But but I, I, I do know that you won't stay on beat if the musicians don't do their job. Great job, team. And then we got the wizard, the new kid on the block up in the sound booth, Rich Christie, you know. And and and. and Justin and, and DJ, they don't need no introduction. You know, they just kind of do what they do. They, they make us look good. And thank you all. Thank each and every one of you for making this possible. Team, you've done an amazing job in celebrating an awesome people. And I believe God is pleased. So keep doing what you're doing. Now, you know every time you take it up a notch, you know we're going to expect you to go another notch. Uh, so, so don't, you know, I'll be trying. Well, they did that. Uh, surely they could do this. So, so uh, all of us going to continue to be stretched. And before you know it, you will enter into a world where you will do things that you have never anticipated doing. That's how God created you. Well, are you ready for the word? We are still running with the giants. We are still running with the giants. Uh, our key verse, Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, 
let us strip off every weight, burden, or hindrance that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Our special guest today, wow, you think the other guest was something. Man, this guest here, he enters the room and his presence is so magnificent to where when he walk in a room, everything that was dead comes to life. He, he comes in and you feel love like you never experienced it. And you're probably wondering, well, who is this gift? Who is this guest? Well, this guest is the Lord Jesus himself. He's the special guest that, that showed, see, he's already he entered the room this morning. You know, when, 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 when things start, when you get that little feeling like, oh, man, that's nice. Well, 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 you know, Jesus just shows up. He changes the atmosphere. You know, one, the Holy Spirit brings the power into the room. And, 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 and Jesus, he, he's the one when you stand there and all of a sudden you feel his presence and tears begin to roll down your face. And, and all of a sudden it's almost like you feel spiritual arms that wrap around you and little whispers in your ear say, hey, it's going to be all right, baby. He's the one. He's, he entered the room. So he, and, and they were talking about Jesus right up under Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first verse. If we would have kept on reading down through the second to the third verse. Now, for those of you, you might be used to seeing scriptures on the, see, on, on the screens. Now, just in case you don't see scriptures on the screen this morning, there's a reason behind it. So I don't want you to think that our sound team messed something up. Pastor Leo did not send them the scriptures. So we're not going to put that pressure on the team. I got you. <laughs> Somebody said Wakanda. <laughs> Hebrews, the 12th chapter, uh, first through the third verse, I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible. The Word of God says, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, first through the third verse, it reads, uh, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed away, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. <laughs> you got people cheering for you, you better get on with it. They didn't come out here and sit in the stands just to observe you doing nothing. That's what they're saying. Get up and get busy. Yes. Strip down. Say, so say now, come on now, we got we to run. Strip down. Take everything off you that is not designed for you to run your race book. Strip down. Start running and never quit. Now, strip down, start running, never quit. You're going to see some things that's going to be designed to distract you, but don't you quit. Keep running your race. No extra spiritual fat. <laughs> no parasitic sins. <laughs> and then we come down here. It says, keep your eyes on Jesus. Why are you keeping your eyes on Jesus? Here it is, you're talking about the, 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 the faith giants. And then verse 2 of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, starts saying, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Saying now, understand, Jesus is asking you to do nothing he didn't done. Jesus already ran the race. He finished his race. So if you need a model on how to start and finish the race, keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, yeah he'll show you how to, how to start strong and finish strong. Study how he did it. Now, when you study someone, that means that you're not just looking. That means that you're taking notes. Okay, now I'm going to study you, Jesus. How did you become, how did everything that you went through, how did you overcome it? How did you finish your race? How do you go from people disliking you at times and crucifying you and beating you until you're unrecognizable, but you didn't quit. I need to know that. Yeah, yeah. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. Oh, so you're telling me, Jesus, that the reason why I need to watch you and understand you started your race and you finished your race because you never lost sight of the prize. You didn't get distracted. Yeah, there will be things that will happen. Just imagine you being born, and all of a sudden, before you come to the planet, there's a hit out on you. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you haven't even gotten here yet. And, and, and the plot is still to kill you. And then, here it is, your mom and dad, you know, her and Joe. Now, I feel people judging me. <laughs> I'm going to say don't judge me. I'm going to say I know it's Joseph. But I, it's personal, so... If I start calling them by the hometown names, just bear with me. Yeah, you know. Some of you have hometown names. Yeah, don't get deep on me. No, your mama didn't name you Pookie. So here it is. Jesus, the one that we're told to study. You got to look at the whole story. You got to look at a little boy who... Here he is, he's so in sync with the father to where they go on a trip to pay taxes and he decided he want to go to church. And he didn't even invite his parents. Now you know how that would have worked out for some of you. Some of you sitting right over here, now the Blue Mail crew, you know if you would have went on a family trip and all of a sudden you'd have got this wild idea that the family's going one direction, but you just feel a need to go Shonda. You want to go to church. So you leave the family. Don't tell mom and dad. And they find themselves three days down the road, and they realize you are not there. So now they got to turn around and travel a three-day back to you to find you in the church. And then you look up and say, like it's no big deal, but don't you know I'm about my father's business? I don't know about you, but in, in the Davis household, I would have had to get me some dentures or whatever you call the fake teeth. I would have had to get something because I know all my thing would have been messed up. You about, I'm going to show you about who business you are about. But Jesus, the Bible says I should study him. So now what I'm doing, I'm giving you an out if you ever go on a family trip. And you feel the anointing of God come on you to tell you to go do something that's outside from the family. And, and you can say, well, I was supposed to study Jesus. And Jesus did have an episode in his life where he wandered off from the family. So I was just following my model. Don't do it because you might. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But the Bible says study him because Jesus already started his race and he finished his race. So he is a little boy that starts off early. He, he separates. He knows what his mission is. And then when he grows into the things that he is called to do, that he's born to do, he does it. Well, as Jesus makes his way into the arena, he lines up beside you and he says, let's go. So Jesus is going to run a few. He's not going to run one lap. One lap will not suffice for Jesus. Jesus just going, you just going to run until Jesus decides he don't want to run no more. So you all are just running and, and he, you're talking. Jesus holding the conversation. You ain't doing no talking because you in awe that you get to run with Jesus. So you know to be quiet. This ain't one of them times where you get all chatty. No, no, this is a time where you just hush and run. Breathe, run. Find your rhythm, run. Hush. So Jesus is running beside you and Jesus is telling you the story. Jesus will... He, he starts the story out saying, hello, I, I'm, I'm, so, I, I'm so glad to meet you. I'm so, uh, I'm so glad that you're running this faith race. And, and some of the things that I want to tell you is, while you're running your race, is make sure that you are always in sync with the Father. He say, because now, uh, as for me, I know you saw I did a lot of things that I get credit for. But sometimes the people that are trying to pattern what I did they miss one important thing that I said. I said I do nothing except the Father tell me. So in every move that I made, you better believe. See, I was on the earth working, but headquarters was up there with my daddy. Holy Spirit was standing by there. He's to do it. You know, you met him last week. Well, everything that I did, I had to consult with the Father. So live your life consulting with the Father. 
If you're going to learn a lesson from me, learn that lesson right there because if you master talking to the Father and waiting for a response from the Father, a lot of the mistakes and the bad decisions that you make, you will not make. Yeah, so, so here it is. We're still running. We're still running. Now, the scripture goes on to say here, let me start right here where it says, uh, because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way, the cross, shame, whatever, because he never lost sight. He's saying that now while you're running and you're going to be talking to the father, there are going to be things that's going to show up. There are going to be some hard times that's going to try to intervene into your world. But what I'm telling you, be so focused on where you're going to where you won't miss a beat. I went to the cross. The cross, as painful as it was, it didn't matter to me. Yes, you know the story. You know how they beat me all night. You know how they plucked my beard out. You know how they beat me until my flesh fell off my body. But because I was so focused, it really didn't matter. Why? My eye was on the prize. I knew why I existed, and I knew that I couldn't give up. Imagine if Jesus would have given up. Jesus said, imagine if I would have abandoned my sign. Where would you be? Yeah, yeah. Imagine if it would have just got so hard to where Jesus would have decided, I'm not doing this here. You know, there's a part in the Bible where Jesus was in the garden, and he looked into the cup. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It, whatever he saw in the cup caused him to say, Father, if it be thy will, uh, don't let me have to do this. What did he see in the cup? What did he see in the cup that would cause him to say, if I could, get, if I could not do this, I sure don't want to do it. I guarantee you he didn't see something pleasant. But as soon as he realized how valuable you and I was, Jesus, while he's in stride, he said, I looked in the cup, and initially it shocked me. It, it caused me to say, well, if there's another way to get it done, Father, I'd rather not do it. But then I thought about what I saw past the pain. And you will look over and say, well, Jesus, what did you see? He said, I saw you. He said, I saw you. When I looked in the cup, first all I saw was my pain and the price I'd have to pay. But then once I, I, I settled in, I saw you. And that's when I said, not my will, but thy will, Father. Love showed up on the scene. Love kicked in and said that no matter what the price is, they're worth it. No matter, I, I saw the cross. I saw them beating me all night. I saw them be, plucking my beard. I saw the crown of thorns being pushed in my head. I saw it. I saw myself hanging on that cross. I saw the flesh falling off my body, but not my will, but thy will, because they're worth it. You must find something worth giving it all for. What is it that you were born to do that the world cannot afford for you not to do it? You do have an assignment. What is, what, what is it that, that, that you're willing to give up for somebody else? There's, there's a, what Jesus did, Jesus already was the son of God. He was already accustomed to living in heaven with the Father. What is it that you're willing to give up your comfort for? That will cause you not to quit. What is it? Because as you run around the track with Jesus, Jesus telling you his story. Yeah, it's going to cause. He look at you and say, you know what? It will cost you something. Are you willing to pay the price for what it will cost? Are you willing to give up everything? Are you willing? <laughs> See, Jesus says, you know what? I understand every sin that you will ever experience. Remember, I took on the sins of the world on the cross. I, 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 
so, so there, there's nothing that you won't do. I, I know how you feel. I know, I know how it feels. He says that every test that you will experience in life, I'll, I've already passed it. I, I know what it feels like when life tests you to the point to where you want to quit. But he, he's saying while he's running beside you with a beautiful smile on his face, he's saying you were built to pass the test. You were built. There's, a, there's an ability that has been placed on the inside of you. No matter how intense it becomes, you are able to pass every test. I know about all the trials. Everything you need to overcome is in there. Even when you can't see it, it's in there. So don't quit. And then he will look and say, forgive everyone who's trying to ruin your life. See, most of the problems that come with life, if you really talk to people, most of the time you feel like quitting, you feel like giving up. There's another person associated with. People will get you off track quicker than anything. Many people have a board who they were born to be because of people. Well, he will say that one of the things that you must do is forgive everyone. Luke, the 23rd chapter, the 34th verse from the New Living Translation says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Here it is. Son of God on the cross. These people crucified him, beat him. Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Can you forgive people that have hurt you so that you won't be distracted from your race? Unforgiveness is a major distraction. It's a dream killer. It's a, it's a baby killer. You know, you've been impregnated with something. Unforgiveness will cause you never to give birth. It's not for the person you're forgiving, but it's for you so that you can keep moving on. And the next thing he will say, uh, help others who are experiencing your same struggle. Sometimes you got to take your eyes off of what you're going through. Find somebody who is being punched by the same challenges of life. Help them. It's something about finding a need that you need and meeting that need and overcoming because you help somebody else. What are you saying, Pastor Leo? I'm saying that sometimes when you are down and out financially, find something to give to someone else who is struggling. I'm saying when you need a word of comfort, go find somebody else and give them a word of comfort. When you feel like nobody loves you, go and love somebody else, and I guarantee you, every seed reproduces after its own kind. You will draw the things into your world just by giving away what you need. And when a good seed hit good ground, it always produces a harvest. Be sure to take care of those who are closest to you. That's what Jesus is saying while they run. They say, look, sometime if you're not careful, when you're going through things, you tend to be the cruelest to the people who are closest to you. He's saying, no, don't do that. Be kind to them. Just because they're there and they're willing to be your sounding board, don't you take out your anger and your frustration on them. Every chance you get, let the people you know know that you love them. Don't spend a lot of time on craziness. Many of you know this, this week we lost a, a family member uh, just out of nowhere, you know, uh, just gone. And you, see, one thing about death, death is final. So everything that you didn't say, you don't get to say. Anything that is not done, it don't get done. That's why you cannot afford to Spend time bickering and fighting and 
No, no, no. Instead of doing that, take time and wrap your arms around the person and say, oh, I love you. I love you with your good, your bad, all of it. I, I love everything about you. And the planet is such a better place because you're here. He, as you, as you all, you and Jesus begin to finish the run, he looks over to you and say, and say to you, God will turn any and everything around in your life and work it out for your good. Why is that important? Sometimes it don't look like you can't see how it's going, good is going to come out of this. Sometimes the pain is so great. Sometimes the disappointment is so big, you can't even see how, how, how can any good come out of this. Know that. No matter what it is, God will turn it around for your good. And then as they get ready to cross the finish line, he looks over and says, finish your race. I'm going to step off the track now. But your race is just beginning. Oh, you must know, never quit. Never lose sight. Never give up. Don't allow people to be a distraction to you. Love the people that are close to you. Make sure you remember that no matter what it is, God will always work it out for your good. And there's a finish line in your, in your race too. But when you cross the finish line, cross knowing that you have given life everything that you were supposed to give it. And if you do that, you will have left a mark on this planet that even after you've gone, people still will be talking about how well you ran your race. So my question to you, will you finish? And I'm not talking about crossing the finish line falling all out. I'm talking about finish the finish line with one of those strides my daughter used to do when she used to run track. She was more concerned about being cute than winning the race. She could have been looking all tore up from the floor up midway around that track, but when she knew she was coming where the people were cheering, she'd begin to touch her face, touch her hair. Why? Because I'm going to have me a, what they call Why is that important to you? Don't you dare let the devil know that he almost got you. Don't you dare let him even begin to believe that, that, that you're just tired and weary. I'm saying catch your second win. And when you come around the finish line, I'm talking about you need to look the cutest you've ever looked in your life. Your stride needs to be perfect. You need to be singing. You need to do like we did in the military. We sang caters, but when we were coming into the home front, I'm, the, I'm talking about we begin to sing loud. Now, if you'd have called us back down maybe about a half a mile down the road, we were mumbling a little bit. But we knew when we were getting ready to cross the finish line. For some reason, we found energy that we didn't know we had. We found a voice that we didn't know we had. So we come in and we be looking good, letting everybody know. Yeah, I may have been tired a little while ago, but I hung with the Lord long enough so that I could win this race. Come in and finish your race strong. Yeah, yeah, finish it strong. Come in and run straight to the camera and look at it and say, how you like me now? Yeah. You're running your race. You look good. You have a crowd cheering for you. So let's do it in style. Give the Lord a big hand praise.
with all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Some of you may not have, e have even began to start your ra running your race with Jesus. Well, this is a good day. This is a good day for you to do what we call give your life to the Lord Jesus, become born again, get in the right track, and then begin to run the race that God has set before you. And I want to tell you that there are some great things awaiting you in your lane. You were not created to be a carbon copy. You were not created to run in somebody else's lane. God has something for you. And you identify that lane by, first of all, making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. So if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to just say a short prayer with me. For those of you that are in the building, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just, I want you to repeat after me. For those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, I just want you to repeat after me. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't say, well, Pastor Leo, I, I, I just finished messing up before I came to church. I've had bad thoughts sitting in church. But I'm telling you, none of that matters. I'm telling you that God loves you and he knows everything about He knows what you're going to do and who you are before you do it and before you ever got here. He knew you. So if you would, just put all that aside and repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for creating a lane just for me. Lord Jesus, I choose this day to run my race with you for the rest of my life. So I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the Son of God, and that you were raised from the dead. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there are some others out there. You, you've been on the track before. You've been running your race. You, start, you, you accepted Jesus and you were running your race, but some kind of way, in the midst of running your race, you moved over into a lane that was not designed for you. It's not your lane. So you know you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you should. God is not mad with you. All you need to do is make the adjustments and get back in the lane and continue on your race. And you do that by rededicating your life unto the Lord. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I choose this day to move back into my lane. Lord Jesus, I ask your forgiveness. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life totally, completely dedicated to you. I rededicate my life this day unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, if you're one of those people that you have either gave your life to the Lord for the very first time or if you rededicated your life, I want to be one of the first to say congratulations. I'm telling you that your life, it's going to be totally amazing. God has some great things in store for you. So if you rededicated your life or if you gave your life to the Lord, we have a little gift for you. For those of you that are in the building, see one of the ushers or the hostesses, we have a, have a little pamphlet that says yes. Just some information that will help you throughout uh, your journey with the Lord. You run into some other problems, this will give you some instructions on how do I kind of walk out my, the life that I just committed to. For those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, if you put in there... Uh, Either you rededicated your life or if you just gave your life to the Lord for the very first time, we would love to get one of these pamphlets in your hand. And we want to say congratulations to those of you that are in the building, those of you that are viewing on our live stream. We want to say congratulations and your best days are out in front of you. We believe that God has amazing things for you as long as you run in the lane that God created for you. They are great things that are in store for you. So we say, see you next week. We love you. 
and give somebody, whether you're in the building or if you're viewing on live stream, tell somebody, I love Jesus. Yeah, I love Jesus.